So in this video, I want to give you a walk through the new features of my Dynameter 2 plugin, which enables you to visualize the density and dynamics of your audio and music at a glance. This is a major update. We've got new display modes. So as well as the classic display mode, we have stereo, mid-side and an adjustable multiband view. We also have the new PSR overview histogram, which enables you to see the typical dynamics or density of your audio at a single glance. And finally, we've got the unique peak aware functionality that I'm particularly excited about. But before I get onto showing you all of those, I thought I'd just take a minute to remind you of how Dynameter works and how it can help you visualize the density and dynamics of your music. And version two of Dynameter is fully resizable. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make it a lot bigger so that you can see what's going on. And Dynameter visualizes the density and dynamics of your audio using a property called PSR, which stands for the peak to short term loudness ratio. That's a bit of a mouthful, but the concept is very simple. The wider the graph, the more dynamic the music signal is, the narrower the graph, the denser it is and the less dynamic. So you can see we have more dynamic sections down here and denser audio here. And the graph is also color coded. So you've got blues, purples and greens for the more dynamic sections, yellow, orange and red for denser sections of audio. And it goes brown and then gray for very, very dense, highly compressed and limited sections of audio. And this graph is fully scalable. We can click and drag to zoom in and out and shift click and drag to adjust the scale. If I play a little bit of audio, you can see the PSR bar here, updating in real time, leaving behind this history trace. So you can see the overall dynamics of a piece of music at a glance. And that brings us to the first of our new features in Dynameter 2, which is the PSR overview histogram bar up the top here, which allows us to very quickly see which PSR values are most typical for our piece of audio. We can get an idea from looking at the graph how much of the overall time is very dense or very dynamic, but the PSR overview gives it to us in a much clearer, even more intuitive form. We can see from this that almost half the time the audio that's been played so far has been very dynamic, and for a relatively small amount of time it has been much more dense. If I play something much louder briefly, you can see an example of some much denser audio, and you can see now a small section of the bar has turned grey there. And this is really useful because let's say we're interested in a particular minimum PSR value for our music to avoid more processing than we would like to use. The minimum PSR indicator here tells us how dense the music has been at its least dynamic moments, but the PSR overview tells us that it only happened for a relatively short amount of time and therefore perhaps isn't something we need to be too concerned about. Now the next new feature of Dynameter 2 that I want to show you is the new display modes. As well as the classic display that you might be used to from Dynameter version 1, we now have the stereo mode, where we can see the differences between the left and right channel throughout the file, as well as mid-side. We've got mid on the left here and side on the right, so without getting into it too deeply, this is basically the PSR of the sum or mono part of the audio signal and over here is the difference or side information, which is much more related to the audio out at the edges of the stereo image. And then finally, we have a new adjustable multiband mode where the audio is split into a low, mid and high band, which I'm going to tell you more about in a minute. Now, each of these displays are measuring the same piece of audio. And you can see that each of these modes is showing you different and useful information about your audio, whether it be differences between the left and right hand side of the stereo image or the mid signal versus the side or different frequency bands. Now, you might remember me saying that the brown and gray color coding in Dynameter represents audio with less dynamics. 
higher density audio. And we can see some of that in the multiband display for this track, even though it's quite a mellow tune. And this is something to watch out for. It's more likely in multiband mode, which kind of makes sense when you think if some of the spiky transient information from the drums is represented here in the mid band, for example, the high and low bands, which possibly don't include as much of that content, could have quite different readings. And this is something that's always been a little bit tricky when you're interpreting PSR graphs in Dynameter. How can you tell the difference between audio that maybe has too much dynamics processing and more restricted dynamics than you want versus something that is just naturally less dynamic, sustained, smooth pad sounds or vocals, for example? And that's why we've introduced the feature I mentioned that I'm perhaps most excited about in Dynameter 2, which is the peak aware functionality down here. All we need to do is enable it and suddenly you get a very different view of the audio. Now what's happening here is the PSR graph remains the same, but it's being shifted horizontally depending on the peak values. So you can see, for example, here where the song is fading out and ending, the peak values are well away from zero, which is represented here over on the right, whereas during the louder sections you can see the audio in each of the bands pushing up towards zero. And from that we can be pretty confident that this piece of dense audio is almost certainly just due to the final sustained bass note gradually fading out drifting away rather than being heavily limited. And in the same way, the variety of peak levels that we can see in the high band up here reassure me that there's not heavy compression or limiting going on. You know, the peak levels there are, if we zoom in a little bit, they're still well below zero most of the time. So that reassures me that this is much more likely to be a natural property of the audio. Whereas if I switch to a different example, this is a very aggressive EDM tune, you can see that all the levels in all the bands are constantly pushing up against zero. And in fact, if we switch to stereo mode, this can be a really useful way of quickly assessing how heavily limited or clipped a piece of audio is in comparison to something much more dynamic. So you hopefully can see how the peak aware display gives us really valuable clues about what's happening with the audio. When we're seeing a consistent maximum level here, the PSR is pushing up against some kind of barrier. That's suggesting to us that clipping and limiting is in place. Whereas here we've got some peaks reaching up close to zero, but there's much more variety, which is likely to be due to a much more natural dynamic profile. And by the way, that clue about pushing up into some kind of barrier applies even when the audio isn't peaking at zero. So here I've taken the same piece of audio but reduced the level by 4 dB. So you can see it's peaking at minus four on the scale here, but you can still see very clearly the, the signs of compression and limiting taking place. And if you see that in a track where you haven't deliberately reduced the gain, that could be a suggestion that actually there's some kind of restriction on the dynamics somewhere earlier in the mix stage. So not in the master bus processing, but perhaps clipping at the send or return from an analog output or input, an older plugin that doesn't support floating point, being pushed too hard, or just some kind of gain staging issue. And I'll show you one more multiband example that shows you the real power of this feature. If I play a bit of Zanny by Billie Eilish, we can see that it starts out being relatively dynamic until we reach the chorus with the very distorted bass. And in this case, we can see very clearly how heavily compressed the low end is because of the high density PSR readings, the brown and gray coloration there, whilst the mids and the highs stay relatively dynamic. Now, of course, that's a deliberate creative effect. It's a really interesting thing about this song. But you can do exactly the same kind of analysis on any audio you would like. You can adjust the cutoff bands for the multiband modes in the settings here. We've got them set so you have roughly equal bands in terms of musical content so that you can see when the dynamics are evenly distributed across the frequency bands or not, as in this case. But you could change those to focus on any frequency range that you would like. The one word of caution I have is that we don't change the colour coding depending on the bands. So 
whatever band split you choose, it's important to do lots of referencing and testing to make sure you understand how what you're seeing compares to what you hear so that you can interpret those results confidently. So there you go. I hope that was helpful or useful for you and gives you a better idea of how the new features in Dynameter 2 might be useful for you. Dynameter 2 is available now. Just head over to meterplugs.com forward slash Dynameter for all the pricing and technical information that you might need. I hope you like the look of it. My name's Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.